many folks would say yes, and I would be one of them. Indeed, they are um, doing major development activity. They are um, providing um, advocacy in the community. Um, and as planners, we need to recognize and realize that they are an asset. And we need to figure out ways to parlay and to um, leverage their resources to help us, particularly in these times where we're facing some financial um, difficulty. Let's talk a minute now about some recommendations. I thought about this and I thought, you know, what do I really want planners in particular to walk away from this? Um, and I thought about just some recommendations, and particularly for municipal governments and planning organizations, um, what they can do to help identify um, ways to really leverage your resources. Um, consider holding your public meetings in a church setting. Now, how many of you have had to have your required public meetings? Um, you know, you have, you're initiating a new community plan, and you're trying to have it within the community, and you need to find a venue, and you have all of these choices, and sometimes, because of the separation of church and state, we say, well, we can't have it at a church. The one thing that you can certainly get is you can get a built-in audience. You can get a built-in audience. So consider having your community meetings at a church center. The other thing I, I, I would tell my planners in Riverside County is, you know, you may have a better chance of people not acting out because they are in church. You know how it is sometimes in community meetings. People want to cuss you out. They want to throw things at you. They may have um, a little bit more, um, you know, regard to where they are and not act out uh, in this environment. Uh, share what you're doing with the church leadership. You are undertaking community plans in their neighborhoods. And, you know, it, it would behoove you to have a meeting with the pastor or to have a meeting with the clergy leadership and to explain to them what you're attempting to do. So share those goals and objectives, um, you know, with neighborhood, plan, neighborhood and community plans. Encourage participation of the parishioners to join boards and commissions. Many of you with your redevelopment authorities have your uh, political action committees, your PACs that you have to set up. Um, so encourage members, you know, if you go out to these places, to join the board. Uh, typically, when we look at people in churches, they're typically more active than you know, your regular people. Share best practices with religious institutions. So some of the examples that we just talked about today, you know, share some of these success stories and say, you know, you have colleagues out here that are doing more than just ministry to the parishioners. Encourage churches to consider public-private partnerships. We all know they work. Um, and so many, of, many churches don't realize and understand that they can do and, and get a lot more done if they simply share the resources. Get neighborhoods to develop neighborhood plans. Get churches to develop neighborhood plans. One of the worst things to have is to have a church that has a lot of land, but does not have a vision on how to develop the land. And as planners, we could help facilitate the discussion and provide examples of how they can develop their land. And then finally, identify advocacy groups like Planning in the Black Community Division, or NOMA. Uh, national form of black public administrators. Individuals that possess the research, technical expertise to provide information to these institutions to help them understand that they can come to us with, with um, questions and we can provide that, you know, the information that they need. As I conclude, I just want to leave, I was, I was thinking about um, just my interaction, not necessarily currently where I work, but prior to joining Compton, I worked for Riverside County. And I had a couple of inter interesting interactions. I had um, predominant white staff. And one young lady on my staff was processing a conditional use permit for a church. We all have experienced this before. This conditional use permit, however, was in an industrial park. Um, 
And the church was simply growing by leaps and bounds, trying to find an appropriate location. The industrial park um, was constructed at the time when the downturn of the economy began, so the developer could not fulfill the vacancies in the park, in his industrial park. So one idea he got was, I'm gonna lease the space out to a church. I've been approached, they have you know, ample parking, they seem to have limited times and opportunities. And so they did, they applied through the county for a conditional use permit. And my planner, um, not talking to me first, decided to begin looking at um, conditions of approval. So she decided, she had a brief conversation with the church and she decided she was going to um, issue limitations on the church. And she did so because there were different types of uses within the complex. So you had traditional industrial uses, but now you have this pub, you know, this religious institutional use now in a industrial park. And so she says, well, Derek, there may be competing issues with the parking at certain times. I said, okay. So she decided they can only operate on Sunday between <laughs> nine and one. <laughs> and I thought, well, this is a person, I don't know her faith, but she obviously does not know how churches work, right. and particularly African-American churches. And this was an African-American church. So I said, well, what about Bible study on Wednesday? What about choir rehearsal on Tuesday, Thursday? What about BTU? And I don't think we even had BTU, but just BTU and all of the other activities, the programs that they had. And so it never dawned on her that, you know, a church is not a one-day activity. And so I say this to say, the church is not your enemy. Take time to learn the activities of religious institutions, particularly when you are processing land entitlements. Today's churches go beyond just the sanctuary. There are other advocacies and activities that they do. Um, and then utilize the fact that there is a captured audience. You know, the churches offer a captured audience. Utilize that and make sure that uh, you can use this as a means of getting out your, um, your information. And Eric, let me just close with this example. Um, right now in Compton, I'm about to adopt the city's general plan. The city of Compton has a population of about 60% Latino. Many people are surprised when they hear that. Um, many of them are undocumented residents. As we began to wind down the general plan, one of the things that we realized is that we did not do appropriate outreach to the Latino community. At the same time, we we're confronted with the issue that many of us, many of the, in the, of the residents in the Latino community are afraid of the government employee, the city employee, because they think we're gonna report them because they're undocumented or you know, you know, call in INS, whatever the issue is. Um, and so I, I talked to my senior planner and I said, we have to do something to reach this population. So the first thing I thought about, like most minority communities, the church is the center of that particular community. <coughs> we went to the largest Latino churches and we said, listen, we need to present this general plan because we have many homeowners here and we have to make sure that they understand that we're going to undergo this process. We're about to propose changes in their land use and they may or may not be able to do what they're doing now. Uh, and so we received uh, opportunities to go to churches and talk just about the general plan. Um, our first efforts, three or four people came out. Um, but as we continue to have more meetings, um, we also decided, well, let's also write our general plan completely in Spanish. Uh, and to our knowledge, in California, it had never been done before. So if you go to our website, we have a general plan in English that's 500 pages or what, however long it is, and a general plan in Spanish. And we gave it to the churches and said, now you need to share this document with your parishioners because we have to make sure that we break, you know, we break this um, issue of communication and this issue of distrust. And I just say all that to say, 
I had to utilize that captured audience that the church had. I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't just walk down the street. If they were afraid of me already, and I tried to approach him when I walked down the street, 